our agenda today react js what is react js what is react js pre request is for the react that uh, it comes under the uh, what what exactly react when to use the react so finally three w's we are going to see right when what why it, it gives you the clarity right so guys i want you uh, you should be a vocal whatever you know because at 100 percent you guys might have gone through some content so i want more interactive this session so whatever it may be whether it is correct or incorrect it doesn't matter but more interactive i would prefer more interactive yes let's begin with react js uh, react js is a library sir react hundred percent correct javascript library okay what else ramya Ramay, you are on mute. Yes, what else? You can it refer really... Google. Yeah, you can refer Google. I'm very happy if you refer Google. But I won't answer. Yes, meanwhile, Pavitra and... Uh... Rakesh also. You can refer Google and tell me what exactly the React is. Yes, Pavitra. Uh, it is JavaScript library uh, used for building user interfaces. Use <laughs> to build user interfaces that means web pages yeah nothing but that is nothing but uh, web pages yes. web pages yeah uh, we right. can use our own components okay uh, yeah components yeah yeah other than that mm. rakesh You're on mute, Rakesh. Well, actually, I don't know. Sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, re explore more on the first statement and second statement. JavaScript library. First of all, what is library? Library in general, when we go for, uh, uh, you know, library, we'll, we'll have some ready-made books. So re library means ready-made sol uh, I mean, solutions will be there. So what is the use of that? So no need develop. It saves a lot of developer times because so let's say for example we want to put a calendar control with a time. So in generally in our earlier days of my career we used to write the HTML code, CSS, and JavaScript to you know let's say for example like the kind of uh, this this kind of a window if you want to implement. So it's a developer responsibility to design the UI and the functionality and uh, you know whatever so developer has to uh, you, developer used to develop the uh, implementation from scratch onwards but when when i when i have a ready made solution i just import the solution and i can start using that i can concentrate more on the functionality and the functionality and the integration test that is a benefit because because if we have this ready-made solution why should we start uh, developing from the scratch so i'll go through that i'll verify the documentation i'll create one sample response and if that sample response is so uh, you know reviewed by the team and everything is perfect to our requirement and then i start using that 
so that is so half of the developer time will save and developer can uh, concentrate more on the functionality and the domain experience that is one why, why we need this library because see we have a strong javascript right? nowadays earlier it was not like that but when we have a modern javascript which is also very robust like any other front end technology but still why we need this a new one because still we can implement any website or any html page with a general uh, html css and javascript why we need this react js why what is what is not there in a javascript what is there in a uh, what is there in a react js that's why because yeah any software cannot fulfill our require business requirement not a uh, client requirement 100 percent maybe one or two features or three feature four features maybe th there may be some lag so to fulfill that gap you know people or organizations invent the new software to require to fill the gap between the business and the business requirement versus customer uh, customer so something was missing in the javascript or normal web development something was missing which is not satisfied for the business requirement so hence we have this latest front end technology to fulfill that gap yeah second one is used to build the user interface yes obviously yeah, front end means HTML. Yeah, especially what kind of uh, website we are going to implement. SPA, single page applications. What that mean? Yeah, it means it won't have one pa uh, single page. Through a whole application can be operated from a single page. That is called a single page application. The very best example is, as we discussed in the introduction class, let's take a simple uh, Wikipedia, wiki page. So when we click the hyperlinks, internal, internal links, not I'm not talking about the external links, internal links only. Either we navigate to top or bottom, we will be in the same page. And even we, we will not observe the page refresh also. But when we take any other websites, when we navigate or when we click the hyperlink, we, we clearly identify that we are navigating into new page. There will be also physically the file is redirected to the new files. But when the same we operate in a wiki page, right? Even we won't see that we are redirected to another page, but still it, it is, you know, it behaves like we are navigating in the same page. So single page means we will have a multiple pages, but from the single page, we will operate the whole application. What is the benefit of that? Right. When you take any normal uh, website, which implemented in a Java or .NET, when you navigate from one page to another page, the location, the address of the website, web page also, you know, changes from abc.html to xyz.html. What, what is wrong with that? When navigating, when user navigating from one page to another page, browser has to remove the all references and the memory allocated for that page and it has to allocate the resources for the new page. So what happens? Again, user is navigating from you know, forth and back to the same uh, XYZ page to ABC page. Every time browser has to clear the all the resources and allocating to the uh, new page, which is a burden on the browser. See, doing the same operation without any, see, even user, even user not changing any data, just, you know, back and forth, back and forth is navigating. So, lot of resources, lot of CPU time get, uh, you know, wasted. So, what we do, and also it is not, uh, what we do when we navigate to the second page, obviously we see some output, some new HTML. Let's say if we have a mechanism where we make one uh, one of the web page as a parent page. So when user uh, click the hyperlink, it's just to send a request to that particular page and uh, take the response and rewrite here so that we will not have any navigation, page reload, so that 
browser has a browser won't uh, you know uh, clear the current references and then allocate the new resources uh, memory or whatever to the fresh because we are not totally navigating we are not totally redirecting to the page we send the request and receive the html and rewrite in the same page that's where we see in the wikipedia wiki page so even though we click the hyperlink the requests go to the child page and take the response and then rewrite there so that's why we won't see any page reloads or refreshes or navigations when we work with a wikipedia wiki page that is called a single page application clear guys rakesh ramya pavitra yeah, yes. clear right yeah yeah ramya yes yeah, sir clear rakesh Right. Rakesh, you can uh, interrupt me if you are not able to understand the concept. Feroz, clear, right? Yes, sir. It's clear. Right. And that is not the only thing. The main drawback of normal development, right? For a single update, let's say, for example, you have a uh, uh, fill lot of information in a page, web page. You submit the button. Somehow you did not uh, enter the location. When we click the submit button, obviously our JavaScript code start validating the data. Right. It validate all the data and it found that one of the important uh, uh, important uh, data was missing. So it it valid it thrown an error message saying that location was missing. And the user has entered that location again, click the submit button. In generally, what happened, right? Again, you start developing the whole data, which is not required because after one row, for initial validation only, we came to know that this data is missing. If again, it start validating, what is the use of that? That is one drawback. And also what happens, right? Okay, validation, okay. It, it validated the whole data for a single, single data. And also it has to, update the data according to the update see earlier it was location was not updated now location has entered by the user when we click the submit button again it has to reload your whole page with the new data for a single we have 30 column and we entered only one uh, column for that single column again it rearranged the uh, html whatever the design of our page so if we are doing again and again, see such a small things again, it, it reloading or refreshing the whole page, which is burden on the browser, right? That is second drawback. And also when we refresh or uh, reload, data should not change, right? See, when we click, uh, when we update the location as India and when we click the submit button, the location should be India. And also the position of the control should be there only. If after the submit, if the position of that, uh, you know, location appears somewhere as the control HTML, somewhere else top or top uh, corner of the right, something like that, your design, we, our design should not change. Who will remember? Browser has to remember. Our code won't remember anything. So browser has to remember the position of the HTML control. Where exactly? What is height and width and longitude and latitude? And what is the data associated with? You should maintain the same before and after refresh or submit. So it is it is really, I tell you, for us, it is only just submit button or only refresh button back and forth. But browser, it took a lot of time because it has, because such a simple application doesn't matter. But when you consider any gaming application or any streaming application, see, right? When we watching the YouTube, uh, you know, YouTube video, then when we navigate to another video again, when we come back from there onwards, it, it start. It won't start from the starting. So that's where remembering the state of our content. So when you are doing again and again, same operation without any meaningful actions, obviously again, button on the browser. So these are the drawbacks there with a the normal development like Java or .NET or normal HTML, CSS, JavaScript. To overcome all this, to overcome all this, we have a React JS. What a React JS will do? React JS simply
remember the state or status i can say status of our page let let's say we have a two text boxes first name full name first name second name right first name and second name first name initially when we run the application initially i entered seva second name naga right okay and then i click the submit button uh, data has saved in a database and same is displaying on the browser fine next time what i did right i changed the seva to something and uh, I did not change anything second name. Again, I click this submit button. When we first time when we run the application, our React remembers the Siva and Naga, the values. It takes, it stores. When next time we update the data and click the submit button, what happens? Right? It compares the previous value and the current value. See, yes, Siva became Siva so that it detects, hey, this is some changes there. Okay, let's touch this part. And when it comes to second control, yes, earlier also Naga and uh, now also Naga, no change. Okay, don't touch this HTML part, only re-updated this part. Okay, that's why the concept, that's why what happens, right? When we have a 10 lines of a code, only update is there in eighth line, only that particular and get a uh, particular line get re-updated so that we can, we save the lot of resources, we save the lot of time so what even right executing 10 lines of code is different executing 100 lines of code is right in react when we have 100 lines it initially execute the 100 lines and save the status of each line yes whenever second time we detect whenever second time it uh, detect the changes only that particular line only it will execute it won't touch the rest of so that obviously right second time only one line execute so we will be getting the response in very less span of time so that when we page became the light and your website became lightweight and then obviously we uh, get the more performance the same way react the same way the react app. every time it captures your uh, data of your Pace when it receives the request next time it compares the board whatever the changes there those will be updated to user so that your page will become like the concept is called as a virtual DOM we will discuss clearly so what happens that unnecessary loadings or refreshes won't happen in react JS 100% who will take care of that? Yes, React uh, itself will take care of that. So our responsibility is to update the data in a proper way. That's it. We have to give the instruction. Then rest of the part, it will take care by React. So that we will have a perfect loading. Unnecessary loadings, unnecessary executions get avoided by the React JS library. Any doubts? Ramya, Pavitra? No, no, sir. Right. Obviously. Yes, right. That is one. Next one. As uh, our friend uh, Pavitra told, components. Yes. Components are not new as per my experience. Earlier in C or C++ Java, we used to call it as a classes or functions or procedures, anything. Now, we named it as a component. Nothing but we cannot write whole application code into a single uh, file, right? We can write it. But what's the problem? It is difficult for us to maintain. It is difficult for us to debug when we have an issue. So because all codes are, all code is in a single file, which are uh, uh, tightly coupled so that if one of the line has issue, obviously rest of the lines won't execute it. So that's why what we do, we divide it into small programs or blocks that we call it call as a classes or a functions okay nothing but let's say for example we have an application we create one page for the login we create one page for the logout we create one page for the users so dividing the whole business functionality into subparts we call it as a components 
which can be private, which can be public. Some components can be reusable. Some components will be only private. Nobody can use it. It has its own functionality. Okay. Next one. Another great feature of uh, React.js, data, one-way data flow. Data flow. That means, what does it mean? Only data get flow from higher parent component to child component, but now in reverse also possible. But what is the benefit? See, since we started our uh, interaction, mutual uh, communication is happening. So once I hear the response from you, then only I'm moving forward to next content. What happens sometimes? If I'm waiting for your response, sometimes you might have some internet. So that's why you are, it was, you are not able to send the response to me. But still, I wait. So there is some delay. That is one thing. And, and also, I should worry about my content. If you understand it and, you know, whatever, if, if you understand it and whatever you, uh, you know, take it and uh, save it, and if you change the content, then it's effect to me. So I, I should always think about my security of the data when we trans when, when it gets transferred to the another compound. React handles that also. React always sends the data from parent to child in a read-only mode. Read-only means they can only read. We can they can only read. If they're trying to child pay child components, still child pages trying to edit the data which they receive from the parent, obviously React throws a message saying that data you received is a read-only. You can only read it. It is not allowed to write it the data directly. Now, you may ask me the question. So it, it is not always the scenarios that we receive the data and, uh, uh, you know, read it. Sometimes we should manipulate something as per the business requirement of the child component. So obviously nobody stops the, you know, child can, uh, child base can take the data into a local variable and edit that. In that way, what happened? Your data will be uh, safe and your original data will not have any impact. So the original data will be safe and also parent can uh, start executing the rest of the code so that the communication happens very uh, fast because Parent won't wait the response from the child because if the data is protected, why should the parent wait for the response from the child? Just pull, pull the data, push the data and start executing the rest of this. So there will be very, 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 very less delay in, in getting the responses between two components. Got it? Right. Any, data, any doubts, guys, so far? Next one, React.js supports CSR, client-side rendering versus server-side rendering, <coughs> SSR, both. For the server-side rendering, yeah, only React, we, we achieve only minimal stuff. But when combined with the next JS, we can completely make our uh, React JS run on the, run from the server-side. Let me uh, clarify the what is client-side and what is server-side, yeah. Guys, any when when we practice uh, any software on your local machine, when we run the application, it takes some time to see the result on the browser. When you when you go immediately to the browser, initially we will see the you know white page, and then we see some you know program uh, some some JS file, JavaScript files are getting loaded, and then whatever. After five, four, after few seconds only, we'll be able to see the application on our local browser. What happens when we run the application, the maximum work done on the browser. Browser has to convert the code into browser understandable language, interpret it, conversion, as well as uh, downloading the required uh, resources from the Google or whatever. So maximum stuff, uh, you know, on the browser so because conversion compilation everything done by the browser so that's why we will see the some latency when we uh, execute the application locally but when we the same application when we when we are uh, accessing from the server we see immediate response because 
when we deploy the code to the server, that means the production server or whatever server, we converted everything. We, everything we converted, we optimize our code, we converted everything. After only we deploy our application uh, on the server so that server directly throws the HTML. That means whatever with the data or whatever. Because we, we done the uh, conversion, everything before we deploy the application on the server. That is called as a server side rendering. That means from the server directly, the file gets downloaded on the browser so that we will see the response immediately. From client side, browser has to convert everything browser has to done. So that means client side, we will, uh, it, it uh, you know, it appears during the development on our local machine. Server side means after everything, conversion, everything, the final optimizer code we develop on the server. <clears throat> Benefit means Obviously, very general example, when we have an internet connection, we don't have an internet connection, even we won't see any uh, single uh, HTML view on the content on the browser, we just see the white uh, page. But when it comes to when you see any normal website, if database connection or something is not working, but still be able to see the design of the page that is called a server because we directly get the HTML from the server. So that server has at least, uh, you know, the content. But when it comes to client side, until unless de uh, dependent resources are available, even we won't able to see the design of the page without data also. So that is called as a client side versus server side running. 100% in real time, we go for the server side only because we don't want make customer to it, uh, irritate, right? So even for data database is down. So after sometimes if the database is up, immediately our application will get refreshed and loaded with the data. Right. Any doubts so far? No. Yeah. Firoz, Nishant, Ramya. No, sir. No, sir. Right. Ramya. Sir. Right. Now that is one. Next one. Huh. Another benefit of the React JS. JS6 or TS6. Right. That means anyone who knows the JavaScript or TypeScript, they can start uh, developing the page. When you take Angular, Angular right? TypeScript knowledge is a uh, mandatory skill. But when it comes to the, uh, you know, Java, uh, React JS, JavaScript, if you have a basic JavaScript uh, knowledge as well as HTML, CSS, that's sufficient. Usually, in generally, we write JavaScript in JS file only. We write a HTML uh, code in a HTML only. But in front end technology, any of the front end technology, we can write java script in a html code and we can write html code in javascript file see right usually it is not possible but react uh, you know front end technologies make that because to avoid the unnecessary calls see if we have a separate javascript and if you have a html Every time it has to call, even though it is an internal file, but maximum a good developer has to avoid this external and internal calls. So which is called as a JS is JavaScript extension and TypeScript action so that we will have our JavaScript and HTML together in a single file rather than, you know, but in, in old tradition way also, we can have a HTML and JavaScript in a single file, but in a separate blocks. But when it comes to JSX or TSX, we can have for a, such a small, uh, for a, such a small, small kind of a functionality rather than having a code in a JavaScript, we can write in a HTML itself. That is called as a JavaScript ex expression or extension or TypeScript expression or extension. Guys, clear? Yes, yes. clear. Right. Good. And Java uh, React JS is easy to learn when compared to other front-end technology. 
and even the market is also more than other front end tech because it is day by day it is growing even not it is not you know uh, degrading Every day by day it is uh, growing yeah and one more thing is it is not uh, not always that you know we should know everything you know before we start the Re reactive js like you know we should know any of the friend any of the back end technologies like java dot net no if it is a static website and you don't have any I mean, content related website so we just simply use as a ui react js as a html react js as a simple html <clears throat> but angular we cannot use like that so that's one yeah so these are the you know major features like you know the major advantage of react js it is gives more performance than other front end technology because of the feature which it has uh, visual dump comparing the previous value and current values and only update the uh, updated reflected area that is what right what are the prerequisites is required for the react js technically or the uh, you know environment setup Technically, we need basics of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, somewhat bootstrap basics. Yeah. And somewhat object oriented, not really required object. Oops. This is sufficient for the React JS. And coming to environment setup, what are the requirements for the environment setup? Node.js, any ID for the development, Visual Studio Code, usually VS Code, we will, uh, most of the developers use the Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code. Or any other free for the developers, a Storm Web Storm or something is there. Right. That's it. Then what Node.js and Visual Studio Code. And then, then what is next one is creating React application. That's it. Yeah. So, guys, yes. On the Google, I tell you when when I was starting. Uh, using this react it was difficult for us to install this react it took one week 10 days something like it we, it was not that much exposed our community support was there so in a google go go and search how to install the react application very very simple two or three steps that fit see if you are able to su uh, install successfully obviously if not let me know i'll forward the document i want you to go through that process yeah next one why you need uh, react obviously performance and uh, for the better performance more responsive more responsive single page applications development when to use react what kind of application we need uh, react complex applications which are which are data centric data centric more navigations uh, data centrics more refreshes uh, iot related application internet of things network related animation related so those kind of uh, applications react is the best because let's take for example data centric or network related application or iot iot in the sense means logistics where we control the devices uh, through the software that is called as iot so what happened let's say very simple example uh, logistics right when you see a containers traveling on the roads. So few containers are uh, cool containers, few are wet containers. Cool containers means any milk related, uh, any other stuff which need the, uh, you know, AC even on the roads also, the, on the container itself. 
So how can we track the location? How can we track the temperature of that particular, uh, you know, vehicle and, uh, uh, you know, the air pressure and the fuel pressure, fuel uh, levels. So all those can be monitored from our software. Those kind of a software, which we call it as IoT, Internet of Things. So that container, from the uh, container from the devices sensors the sensors collect the data from the because at the fuel they'll install one uh, sensor for the tires they'll install one sensor to get the uh, you know air levels and for the cooling also obviously sensors all the sensors will uh, take the data and report to a satellite from their satellite our application uh, software will uh, get the data and displays on the uh, on the dashboard that is called as IBOT. So when especially take, you know, logistics domain, every fraction of seconds, we receive a lot of data from the a single vehicle because when we track the location, obviously every minute second, nanoseconds, we receive the longitude and latitude. When you take one hour history of that vehicle, you see a lot of data. So what has to be changed on the user's view? Only the vehicle position, Google map, right? When you order any food on the Zomato or Swiggy, when you own our uh, Google map, only the vehicle uh, route only change. The rest of will be remain same almost. Only that, uh, you know, navigation of that, uh, you know, the order by changes. So when you when you refresh the page every nanosecond so after some time the browser get crash so we should only change the movements of that particular vehicle so those kind of application we go for react because react won't uh, refreshes the page every time only reflected area it will re rearrange and uh, display to the user and also animation related when when you have 10 uh, you know blocks video visual blocks yeah, where user able to see and only one block uh, you know ha has some update instead of reorganizing the 10 visual blocks only that particular box will be will be rearranged so that you know lot of resources will be saved and more data where you have a requirement and you receive the data frequently and then every time you have to process react is the best option without any second thought with a small search, it is not a thumb rule that only for the complex application we go for React. No, any any for any kind of application we go for React or any other front end technologies, but only these are the specific application where we you know maximum market go for the React yes, not when you have a less amount of data to process and very rare we get the update. Those kind of application we go for the Angular, which is right. Angular is a Angular, you know, which because it is a framework, it do a maximum in uh, things for the developer, and developer won't do you know customization as he uh, as he request as he will as he wish. But when it comes to library, uh, there will be a lot of uh, uh, liveries uh, uh, under the uh, for the developer where what to do, what not to do. Developer can easily maintain. I mean, decide, but framework it is not. We will see the difference between library and framework in moving sessions. So these are the three W's. What is React JS? Why it need to React JS? When to use the React JS? So if someone comes and uh, yeah, hey, we have this kind of applications, which technology we want to prefer? Yes, obviously the uses and behavior of the application and the size of the application, which is a technology. Guys, any doubts? No. Clear? Yes, we are clear. Right. So we should know uh, what kind of application we has to choose. Right. So if no doubts, yeah, I will uh, wind up this session. For the next session, I request you guys to make your laptops have uh, has you uh, know react install on it the next session we'll start uh, we will we'll create one react application and then we'll go through the project structure and then we'll we'll also discuss about if time permits we'll also discuss about some technical terms which we frequently hear uh, during the live development if you have any guys please i'll give it two three seconds you can uh, even Ping, ping your doubts on the chat also.
and also you can share your feelings also. i mean your your knowledge also whatever you have gone through so far the react js yes nishan please yeah, answer i i have installed uh, node and as well as in vs code when i try to run the application it is not running in my personal laptop but in my office laptop the same it is working fine i can able to run one uh, small sample uh, application good so first you have created node js on top of uh, yeah um, not top of parallel also you have installed the visual studio code right yes yes and also you have created the application yes right so from where did you are trying to open the application run the application uh, in vs code only i opened it and i i just created some sample app application to run hmm. but it is not running what is error it is giving some error I, i don't remember even i didn't take screenshot as well i guess let me show you that because of my name of the uh, computer got changed i don't know no i tell you yeah i got your uh, doubt see from the uh, visual studio or from the uh, node js command prompt uh, from anywhere else we can run our application so you should navigate uh, to your particular specific folder i'll show you where yeah. otherwise your project won't work where this visual studio code yeah it is opening up huh? mm. so let's say this is your application okay? okay so open from the how we open file open right so not from here uh, in uh i create after creating node js create react app uh, command it will create one uh, app right uh, from that folder i right click on that and i open it uh, in uh, open with code like that i did uh, no 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 <laughs> i tell you file okay open yeah. folder okay so let's say for example this is your project imagine okay total okay. folder we should select yeah it is open so now from terminal only you run the application right no uh, here terminal only ha huh. make sure that if you open from the file uh, open folder in the terminal we will see the perfect project path okay without any doubt here we should cross check the path of our project it's coming what is the command to use npm start npm right? start yeah yes correct see right you should also verify the path how we can verify here uh, which command we have to use no when you open the terminal automatically it, automatically it comes now oh. here you issue the npm start okay 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 right right so i request you guys to next uh, in a next session you should be ready with the environment set up so tomorrow we'll directly start creating the application and discussing about the project structure okay all right guys see you tomorrow uh, yeah yeah carry on please is there any chance of creating portfolio sir portfolio portfolio i did not get your question clearly Uh, can we create portfolio in... where uh, i mean in this project uh, can we create portfolio in this i mean in this class portfolio <coughs> means today. no portfolio means uh, the project you are talking about i did not get your question clearly are you i i, I hope you are a telugu guy right yeah yes sir yeah mr mr pandey uh, sir uh, ante manam 
ఈ ఈ వన్ మంత్ కోర్స్ లో మనం పోర్ట్ఫోలియో క్రియేట్ చేస్తామా పోర్ట్ఫోలియో అంటే అదే ఈ ఆస్కింగ్ అబౌట్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ యు ఆర్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ యా యా ఇట్స్ ఎట్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో ప్రాజెక్ట్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో ప్రాజెక్ట్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో ప్రాజెక్ట్ మీన్స్ పర్సనల్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో యు ఆర్ ఆస్కింగ్ యా యా ఐ యామ్ ఆస్కింగ్ ఫర్ పర్సనల్ యువర్ పర్సనల్ లైక్ పర్సనల్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో మీన్స్ లైక్ పర్సనల్ CV kind of thing he she is asking that is what you are asking pavitra <laughs> yeah yes sir <laughs> no resume yeah resume i can guide you no i am talking and i was in the impression that you are talking about something the project which is like a portfolio no yeah you after completion of this at least you'll uh, you yeah, yeah not at least you get to your confidence and then you can add any project something you know but we i don't uh-huh. know yeah carry on not assume sir i mean we create our personal portfolio sir like uh, by creating animations like this oh hey nishant i got she wanted to implement a page with yeah. her portfolio correct ah uh, yes sir yeah. yes you can no okay. in this yeah this in this course no we will discuss the a uh, project from scratch onwards but if you personally want that by using the features you can implement the portfolio and then give to me for the review so we can sit together review and then you can give the demo to the uh, our teammates okay sir sure yeah okay that is yes. uh, related to animation that is not a major part now i got you should be asking the question so whether i mean how to create a portfolio for something yeah uh, yeah yes because yeah. i uh, i uh, i already have tried for that <laughs> and i have done basic react project also uh-huh. previously mm-hmm. so i need to learn much about that so yes uh, are you are you from india or you, you know, out of india i'm from telupati from there okay no issue see once i tell you when we cover half of the not even half of uh, 40% some somewhere else so you get that confidence if you practice perfectly i am telling practice practice so okay. on a google obviously you might have gone through that project on the google right portfolio project yeah yes uh, okay. so the, the the why you are not i mean uh, you are not able to understand philippine because the features you are not able to understand okay. say something prop something like that right and the navigation yeah. mm-hmm. and high ho- something so once we go, uh, finish the state management props all the stuff so uh, like uh, life cycle events then you can understand the structure of that project okay then you can do yourself okay okay yes nishant yeah that's it sir okay next session yeah we will start ex- uh, creating the project and we will discuss it okay yeah anything else